Today I am standing in front of the future site of Allendale's next restaurant. Some of you, you've been waiting for it. Some of you, you've never heard of it. Mr. Burger. It's all staked out. See, there is uh, different uh, these uh, steaks with the pink flags. Uh, that is probably something that is going to be important to those who are going to be building that and all the construction noises that are to come. But imagine right now that you're going to go to Mr. Burger here in Allendale next to Walgreens. You going to do that tomorrow? You going to do that on Friday? Are you going to show up? Are you going to invite friends? Are you going to look at that menu and be so excited to have all day breakfast? Well, no, of course not. There's nothing here. Only thing that you're going to hear is the construction noise of the renovation at Walgreens and all the trucks and the cars going by, but you're not going to hear a waiter or a waitress. You're not going to hear conversation. You're not going to hear chatter. None of that. The restaurant's not here, but more importantly, the people aren't here. I want to use this to highlight a name that we find in the Old Testament that's actually only used once. It's the very last verse in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 48, where it says, The Lord is there. In Hebrew, Jehovah Shema, or Yahweh Shema. The Lord is there. Well, what is the significance of that? Well, if you look at the whole theme and the whole book of Ezekiel, there's something that is so important, and that is the very presence of God, the glory of the Lord, and the importance of the temple. Biblical history, it recounts how the first temple that was built was destroyed by the Babylonians about the year 587 B.C. And in Ezekiel, there is a vision. Now let me backtrack first. The reason why it was destroyed was God was bringing about judgment for those who forsake their love and trust exclusively in him. And he sent prophet after prophet after prophet warning them, return to me, return to me. They refused to listen. So, as was promised, the Lord brought four nations to come to carry them off into exile. And what is described in different places in the Old Testament is how that first temple was destroyed. But in Ezekiel, we get a vision of what was happening. It wasn't just that the brick and mortar and any of the, uh, the furnishings and any of the, the special treasures that were inside of that were going to be uh, destroyed or carried away because they were perceived of having financial value. There was a vision in Ezekiel in which the very glory of the Lord departs as if on a chariot. God's presence and his glory leaves the temple site. Now, let's look again at the name that is given in the final verse of Ezekiel because Ezekiel is about promise after exile. God's people are going to be brought back. God's temple is going to be rebuilt. And most importantly, the very presence of the Lord, it is foretold in Ezekiel that the glory of the Lord is going to come back. In verse 30 to 35, you have this interesting description where the city gates are, are being staked out, much like these stakes were put into place before something is, is built, the distance between one city gate and another city gate is described in that final chapter. Those are just building details from the architect. But what really matters is that final verse. Jehovah Shema. The Lord is there. I want to read now a connection from Revelation chapter 3 thinks about Christ. Christ is our Lord. And these are words of encouragement, those who hold fast, those who persevere, those who stay true to him. This is what Jesus says in Revelation chapter 3. I am coming soon. Hold on to 
what you have, so that no one will take your crown. Now to the one who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Much of what is described in Ezekiel, the rebuilding now, the new heavens and the, the new earth, the new city that is being prepared for us. Never again will that person, never again will he leave it. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming out of heaven from my God. I will also write on him my new name. Think about that now. The future dwelling place that is being built and prepared for us. Now the dimensions we can learn about. They are described elsewhere in the book of Revelation. The building, the layout, whatever it might be. What's most important and what was most important for Ezekiel to tell the people of Israel those who had denied God and were wondering, is God still glorious? Is God still good? Would God remember them? Here's the promise, and it's the hope of the gospel, where God tells us again and again and again throughout Scripture, yes, I will restore you. Yes, I will give you a new home to all who place their trust in my son Jesus. Yes, I am making a new home for you. And what's going to make it especially important for you to know is that I myself will be there. Jehovah, Yahweh, I am who I am. That's who's going to be there. That's our host. That's who's going to welcome us. And that's who will welcome you. You see, the Israelites, they had sinned. They had rebelled. They had broken the worst of all of the commandments. And even then, God is offering out that invitation. The one who is there is saying, come back to me. I'm making a new home for all those who place their trust in me. It's being built even now. Jesus is preparing that place for us to dwell with him. Jehovah Shema. Where do you want to dwell forever and ever? Let me tell you where I want to dwell. I want to dwell where God himself lives. The city of God. The new Jerusalem that he's being built and is found through faith and trust in Jesus Christ.